So good day to everyone. Our topic for today will be Our Lady and the Final Battle. And this is uh, very important today because uh, there are many things occurring to this world which we may call signs of the times. Now, a secret given by Our Lady of La Salette to Maximine, one of the shepherd children, was this. The monsters or demons shall arrive at the end of this 19th century or at latest at the commencement of the 20th century. And she further adds, in the year 1864, Lucifer together with a large number of demons will be unloosed from hell. They will put an end to faith little by little. The demons, she continues, will have great power over nature. There will be churches built to serve these spirits. Now we know that there are temples of Satan in certain places in the world. They've been accepted by society and they have been accepted as real religions, as true religions. She continues, Our Lady continues, the disorders and crimes of men have pierced the vault of the heavens. Several seats will be shaken down and swallowed up by earthquakes. Nothing will be seen but murder. The sins of men are the cause of all the troubles on this earth. The earth will be struck by calamities of all kinds. There will be a series of wars until the last war. People will think of nothing but amusement. And as Blessed Anne Catholic Emmerich, one of the greatest visionaries of the church and beatified by St. John Paul II, tells us in one of her revelations, God himself has had decreed this. And I was likewise told that the devil will be unchanged for a time 50 or 60 years. Before the year of Christ, the year 2000, a certain number of demons are to be let loose much earlier than Lucifer. So now there is the need for the revival, a real revival of the ministry of exorcism. There is a lot of diabolical activity occurring now in today's world. And we can see the effect, their effects in our society, in our world at large. Sin and evil are so rampant today. Mama Mary said to Saint Faustina, you have to speak to the world about his great mercy and prepare the world for the second coming of him who will come not as a merciful savior, but as a just judge. Oh, how terrible is that day. The angels tremble before it. Speak to souls about this great mercy while it is still time for granting mercy. So these are very powerful words of Mama Mary, the saint of the divine mercy. St. John Paul II tells us we are now facing the final confrontation, final confrontation between the church and the anti-church of the gospel versus the anti-gospel. And St. John Bosco, a great devotee of Mary, help of Christians, he said that some of the most serious trials in the long history of the church were about to occur in the 20th century. And compared to what would still happen, all the suffering that had already occurred on the church's history would be almost insignificant. We consecrate ourselves to Mary so that we can consecrate ourselves more faithfully to Jesus. Through Mary, we, can go, we go to Jesus as Jesus came to us through Mary. And yet this dream, according to him, the two means by which the church is saved will be devotion to Jesus in the most blessed sacrament and devotion to the blessed Virgin Mary. That is why the new 
false religions and cults focus first and foremost by separating the Catholics whom they ensnare. They separate them from the Holy Eucharist and from Mama Mary. They attack the Blessed Sacrament and our devotion to Mama Mary. St. Louis de Montfort tells us the salvation of the world began through Mary and through her it, will, it must be accomplished. So God will always win. And we see the signs of the times. There's a lot of battle going on. And the triumph of God will first and foremost be preceded by Mama Mary. And we see the, these signs of Mama Mary's intercession very clearly today. I would like to quote from the, this book, The Marian Option, God's Solution to a Civilization in Crisis. According to the author, we are living in anti-Mary times. If Christ is the new Adam and Mary the new Eve, it only makes sense that an anti-Christ would have the female complement of an anti-Mary. An anti-Mary can also be seen as a movement, not simply a person, a group of persons. It would embody Eve's vice of disobedience. It would be the antithesis of Mary versus Mary's weak meekness and silence, humility, perseverance in suffering and patience and love for others. We see today a culture that is self-absorbed, narcissistic, disdains suffering in the cross, focuses on instant gratification which destroys commitments, creates independence from God, and creates one's own values and standards which flow from the flesh and the values of the devil, seeks independence from all legitimate authority, especially the church, and, and an arrogant and aggressive fight for one's supposed rights, which are not real rights. These are simply created rights. The attack on motherhood is another sign of the anti-Mary culture and the culture of death. Instead of having children for the sake of those children and their future, children become all about parents. We see this first contraception and then abortion. That a child is under the power of diabolical forces working through, sadly, some parents. Also, we see the anti-Mary culture in a highly sexualized age. If Mama Mary is the truly the purest of our virgins, we see the diabolical culture of the anti-Mary in the focus on sexuality cut off from the plan of God, cut off from what is spiritual. So in the diary of St. Faustina, Jesus tells us, before I come as a just judge, I am coming first as the king of mercy. Before the day of justice arrives, there will be given to people a sign in the heavens of this sort. So we will all experience this. All lights in the heavens will be extinguished and there will be great darkness over the whole earth. The sign of the cross will be seen in the sky and from the openings where the hands and the feet of the Savior were, nailed will come forth great lights which will light up the earth for a period of time. This will take place shortly before the last day. St. Louis de Montfort, the great Marian saint, tells us God then wishes to reveal and make known Mary, the masterpiece of his hands in these latter times. And he tells us, be, being the way by which Jesus came to us the first time, she will also be the way by which he will come the second time. That's why we see now the dawn of a Marian age, a new Marian age. According to, to the author of the Marian option, there is now a multiplication of Marian apparitions. We see now the onset of the Marian centuries. There is now a continued development of Mariology. Among the popes, there has been a significant increase in writings about Mary in the last two centuries. And there is development now in the popular devotions to Mama Mary. And lastly, a continued development of Marian communities. There are now many Marian communities that are being born in today's world being created by Mama Mary herself. And this is a sign that we are in the latter days. 
Mama Mary will precede the coming of her son and the devil desires first and foremost to create a culture that will block Mama Mary's intervention in our world. God will have the final word and that is Mary. That's why in the Song of Songs, I would like to quote, Who is she that cometh forth as the morning, rising, fair as the moon, bright as the sun, terrible as an army set in array? Mama Mary will be the point of the spear. God will use the most humble of creatures to destroy the pride of the most proud creature, who is the devil. That's why also in the Marian option, we see some ways by which we can develop a certain Marian culture in our homes and in our communities. First, of course, the rosary, then consecration to Mama Mary. There are many good books now to how to make a proper consecration, like the 33-day 33, 33 consecration of St. Louis de Montfort, to fill the home with beautiful Marian artwork, visit a Marian shrine, novenas to our lady and doer of knots, the angelus, the brown scapular, the miraculous medal, the Fatima prayer, the first Saturday devotions, praying for, for poor souls in purgatory, as having a statue of Mama Mary outside the house to show that this house belongs to the Lord and to Mama Mary, to celebrate the Marian feasts and to learn Marian hymns. This pleases Mama Mary and of course her son a lot. And this brings about a Marian culture in the home where Mama Mary's mantle protects each member of the family. Of course, the most important thing is the essence of Marian spirituality is imitation. To practice the Marian virtues. St. Augustine calls Mama Mary the living mold of God. St. Louis de Bonfort tells us there is not and there will never be either in God's creation or in his mind a creature in whom he is so honored as in the most blessed Virgin Mary, not accepting even the saints, the cherubim, or the highest seraphim in heaven. And therefore, she is truly the ultimate model of how it is to live as Christians. Learning in a detailed manner, Mama Mary, and merely for not merely for information, but more for formation, which ends in transformation. So that... God himself recognizes Mama Mary in us. And the more we are conformed to Mama Mary, the more we are conformed to Christ. That's why this is something very important. You cannot separate ever Christ from Mama Mary or Mama Mary from Christ. That's why even in the apparitions, she would always, many times, manifest always with Jesus Christ. She will always point to Jesus Christ. She will always, in her apparitions, ask for a chapel to be built so that it will lead people towards Christ, towards the sacraments, towards the blessed sacrament. Marian spirituality is interiorizing her dispositions and virtues to replace our old way of doing things and perceiving things. To be able to move into this world and become holy, we have to have the eyes of Mama Mary, to see with things with the eyes of faith, to, to see in circumstances with the eyes of faith so that we're able to respond as Mama Mary responds. So wherever we are, the world does not change us, but we transform the world through a Marian presence. But first, we have to allow Mama Mary to form the virtues of Christ in us. And therefore, our constant thoughts should always be, what would Mama Mary do? How would she act? What would be in her heart in this, when I'm confronted with these situations? How would she perceive this? When Mama Mary is formed in us, then so is Jesus Christ. In the book of Genesis, the creation of man is God's masterpiece. Now we can have a question. Aren't the angels higher than human beings because they are pure spirits? So what does this mean? It is because of Our Lady. That's why man is, a, is the masterpiece of God because of Our Lady. She alone surpasses the highest of the angels in the image of God. And she is queen not only of man, but also the angels. In fact, the entire universe. She exceeds all creation by her, the grace that is in her. She may be lower by her human nature to the angels, but by grace she is higher than the highest set of him. Much, much higher. 
And this is part of the envy of the fallen angels because they will never serve a queen who is a human being. That is their pride. Mama Mary is also the goal of what mankind has been called to be. Of course, we have Jesus Christ as the real model. He is God and man, but Mama Mary is pure human. And therefore, she serves as a unique model for us to grow in virtue. In her, paradise is present on earth. God's dream of mankind is seen now as a concrete reality. The most perfect image of a creature, of a human being in God's mind, is made real in Mama Mary. And this has been spoken about and shared again and again and proclaimed again and again by the great saints, the great saints of Mama Mary. When Jesus was on the cross, he only had to look at his mother to see that his sufferings was all worth it. Therefore, the church never lowers her ideals and hopes. According to St. Pope Paul VI, God, she, Mary, is given to us as a pledge and guarantee that God's plan in Christ for the salvation of the whole man has already achieved realization in a creature, in her. We have to follow the model God has set before us and never let our eyes leave her. So she, when we look at Mama Mary, she, we can see already what we are supposed to become. The plan of God for us. That is our potential. She si shines in the heavens as who we are called to become. And Mama Mary, lo by looking at her, we already know that God has triumphed. That we have now access to heaven and we, become, and we can become like and be with Mama Mary. That's why St. Maximilian Colbert tells as just as the son to show us how great his love is became a man, so the third person, God who is love, the Holy Spirit, will to show his mediation as regards the father and the son by means of a concrete sign. This sign is the heart of the Immaculate Virgin. This is a, these are very powerful words. Okay? That means the Holy Spirit, in a sense, is manifesting himself in today's world. As a second person of the Trinity manifested himself in today's world through in Jesus Christ, the Holy Spirit manifests himself in today's world through the heart of Mama Mary. That is why St. Alphonsus de Liguri would tell us, no one after God loves us or can love us as much as Mary. And if we were com to combine all the love that mothers bear their children, all the love of husbands for their wives, all the love of angels and saints for their devoted clients, all this would not equal Mary's love for a single soul. And therefore, we can never doubt and, and you know, fall into despair and fear if we call upon Mama Mary. In John chapter 9, verse 26, we see the words of Jesus, Woman, behold your son. She is made to be the mother and caretaker of the fruit of the mission of Jesus, which is the church. Son, who is Saint John, symbolizes the church. And in John chapter 19, verse 27, from that hour, the disciple took her to his own home. So Mama Mary is given to the church, and the church is given to Mama Mary. So the church in John acknowledged and accepted formally Mary as her mother. So there is a double movement. Son to the mother and mother to the son. And what does this dumbbell entrustment mean? First, there is a need for consecration and second, for reparation. We give ourselves to Mama Mary in consecration. Okay? We give ourselves totally to her in consecration and through reparation, we show our love for her. Now, consecration has three points. Consecration through Mama Mary assists in fulfilling our potentials as baptized. To be able to reach the heights of holiness, we need Mama Mary. That is part of the plan of God. That's why no saint was ever distant from Mama Mary. All saints had a very deep devotion to Our Lady. That's why St. Louis de Montfort tells us, Mary will consequently produce the greatest saints that there will be in the end of time. Be, especially in these latter days, if we desire to truly be holy in our culture that is filled with evil and sin, we have to be close to Mama Mary. We have to consecrate ourselves to her. Blessed James Alberioni, a great devotee of Mary, he says, will become a saint. 
Consecration, secondly, is a shield from the spirit of the world and the devil. St. Louis de Montfort tells us, while Mary is present, the evil one is absent. Also, he continues, the power of Mary over all the devils will especially shine forth in the latter times. St. Alphonsus de Liguri tells us, when the devil wishes to make himself master of a soul, he seeks to make it give up devotion to Mary. And therefore, we see how many Catholics, okay, when they are drawn to these false religions, false Christian cults and sects, the first thing that they hear okay, is the people of that uh, sect or cult attacking Mama Mary. According to St. Maximilian Kolbe, a great Marian saint, modern times are dominated by Satan and will be more so in the future. The Immaculata, Mama Mary alone has from God the promise of victory over Satan. So if we want to defeat the devil, we have to be close to Mama Mary. Thirdly, consecration separates us from the world for the service of God. God can better use us as his instruments if we give ourselves and place ourselves into the hands of Mama Mary. She can make us a more beautiful gift to God, to Jesus Christ, to be used to bring about the triumph of the heart of Mama Mary and of course, the, first and foremost, the heart of God, the heart of Jesus Christ. So before someone is used for the service of God, they are sanctified first by consecration. St. Maximilian Kolbe tells us, Mary seeks souls who will consecrate themselves entirely to her, who will become in her hands effective instruments for the defeat of Satan and the spreading of God's kingdom upon earth. The second element is of entrustment is reparation. Reparation to her for her sorrows as a mother. Reparation to the Immaculate Heart of Mama Mary. Jesus told Saint, uh, Sister Lucia, one of the uh, seers of Fatima, of the necessity of reparation due to the blasphemies by which people offend the Immaculate Heart of his mother. What is reparation? It is an act of love to Mama Mary to help make up for someone's failure to re or refusal to love her. When we offer some good deed or act of self-denial as reparation, we are saying, I love you, in order to make up an offense against her, that by which someone else said, I do not love you. Aside from the many reparations that we can do, uh, the many types of reparations that we can do, uh, uh, one of the most important, if not the most important, first and foremost, are the first five Saturdays devotion which counters the five blasphemies against Our Lady. Okay, we see that in the words of Jesus to Sister Lucia. There are five blasphemies against Our Lady. In the five Saturdays, in a sense, does they do reparation for these five blasphemies. Now, the, now Pentecost is the birthday of the church. We see that in Acts chapter 1, verse 14. Okay, the Annunciation, the Holy Spirit, during the Annunciation, the Holy Spirit makes Mama Mary mother of God, but during Pentecost, the Holy Spirit makes her mother of the church in a formal manner. Okay? So Annunciation, mother of God, and during Pentecost, she's made formally mother of the church. Informally, she was made mother of the church during the cruc crucifixion of our Lord Jesus when Jesus gave St. John to Mama Mary and Mama Mary to St. John. St. John Paul II and Mama Mary. According to him, she is mother of the church. She accompanies her in time. Without Mary, the church would leave its own identity. Uh, very powerful words. The church is in pilgrimage with Mary. And the rule of the upper room, where the church is, Mary is. Where Mary is, there is the church of Christ. So you cannot, and you can never separate Mama Mary from the church. Once you remove the church from Mama Mary or Mama Mary from the church, then the church loses its identity. Because the church, which is the body of Christ, is always united. The son is always united with the mother. In Revelation chapter 12, verse 13, uh, chapter 12 to 13, we see the battle in heaven. We see, we see her queenship. And this is what the devil cannot stand, the royalty of Mama Mary that there's a human being above him. 
The devil, because of his anger, does not anymore appear as a serpent in the book of Revelation, unlike in the book of Genesis, where he appears as a liar and deceiver. Also, because he cannot deceive the new Eve, Mama Mary, hence he appears now in his true form, a fiery red dragon. In the fullness of his diabolical power, he desires to truly make a frontal assault to Mama Mary and her children. The devil raises two beasts to assist him in overcoming the work of God through Mama Mary. We see that in the book of Revelation. The first beast, the beast of the sea, is the image of the dragon having seven heads and ten horns. Horns means power. And this means that the devil is able to manipulate politics, economics, and the military power of the world in order to counter and persecute the children of Mama Mary, to persecute the gospel. The dragon hides behind human institutions. He uses human institutions to attack and persecute the church, which we see very clearly right now. We don't see that behind all of this persecution, the devil is acting. The first beast is this, this institutions being used by the devil. The first beast spreads atheism to deny the creator. The second beast in the book of Revelation is the beast of the earth. Described as resembling the lamb, but speaks like the dragon. What does this mean? It's a false religion that promises redemption without the need of, for God. We see the, this now with the rise of all these new age religions, with the rise of Satanism. Okay? It creates a virtual world. One exorcist in, the, in one of the conferences of the IAE, or the International Association of Exorcists, mentioned the beast of the earth proposes salvation to men through a powerful action that derives from occult powers. So we are now dealing with the new age, with witchcraft, with Satanism, diabolical religions, and behind them, uh, they have powers which are preternatural. They have real powers because they are gaining their powers and getting their powers from the evil one himself and his, dominion, and his minions. Now, Sister Lucia tells us the final battle between the Lord and the reign of Satan will be about marriage and the family. And we see that happening right now. Because once you destroy marriage and the family, you destroy the very, we may say, foundation of society. Once you destroy that, all the rest follows. Vocations are destroyed. Societies are destroyed. Uh, the entire world is affected. Therefore, some recommendations for family protection. Remember, as married couples, there is the spiritual authority of parents gained from holy matrimony. As priests gain a certain power or authority because of their ordination, in, in matrimony, married couples gain also spiritual power, not only to protect them, grow in holiness, but also protect themselves and their, love and their family members from the attacks of the evil one. Therefore, another important thing is serve as a, the parents should serve as a unity among the family members. The devil hates unity. Therefore, going as a family to the sacraments, mass and confession, praying together, it is, a very, it is more powerful because the presence of Christ is there when two or three are gathered. Parents praying for their children and children for their parents, especially the children that have very powerful intercessory uh, power with regards to God because of their, their innocence and their faith. Christ truly, when he sees them, this, uh, truly desires to embrace them. He is truly attracted to them. And, I'm sh and therefore, we're certain that he will listen to their prayers. Also, I would like to uh, quote St. Louis de Montfort. When people say the rosary together, it is far more formidable to the devil than one said privately because it is an army that is attacking him. Also have family devotion to Mama Mary and the saints. Read books on Mama Mary and try to see what devotions the family can practice together. And also your patron saints, the patron saints that, were, that you chose when you, uh, for your children when they were baptized, immediately become their patron saints and intercedes immediately after baptism for, their, for the children placed under their care. And therefore have a devotion to the saints they still have to be invited in our life and we show that invitation by having a devotion to them. Using the sacramentals of the church, holy water, exorcised salt, blessed candles, crucifixes, exercise oil. 
devotion to the angels, the art angels, and the guardian angels. Especially St. Michael against spiritual enemies. And St. Raphael when we are dealing with sicknesses. Blessing the home regularly using the sacramentals. Okay, this will create a cre sacred atmosphere, a sacred space around the home. So that if ever a person falls into sin or there is some, for example, there's some conflict that occurs, there will be no evil spirits around the place in the atmosphere to aggravate the situation, to aggravate the, con the, the negative conflict or the sin that is, a, that is committed then and there. So create a sacred space by using the sacramentals like holy water regularly in order to okay, make sure that there are no diabolical spirits and the, and the Holy Spirit is the only spirit that is present in the home. Doing charitable works of mercy as a family so that the blessings of God will not only go to individual members but also the entire family as a whole. Learning to offer God's sacrifices and penances as a family. It is sad that many uh, in the family, many times the concept of mortification, penance, offering of uh, uh, certain uh, mortification and sacrifices to God as a family uh, is not anymore practiced. Okay? Many family members are now focused simply on enjoying as much as possible all the pleasures of the world, especially through the social media. That's why uh, people right now, especially the young, are they are easily they easily are frustrated when a cross arrives in their life. They don't know how to handle it. Okay? They easily fall into sadness frustration, depression, even suicide when a, when a certain difficulty arrives into, in their lives. They are not prepared to carry the crosses nor to grow from these crosses. Offering holy masses for the protection and deliverance of the family. So not only offering masses for healing or for the blessing of the family, but also protection and deliverance from evil spirits. Many people forget this, uh, this dimension. Also, remember the sins of the first commandment. First and foremost, superstition. Where one attributes an importance in some way magical to certain practices. We see that in the Catechism of the Catholic Church, 2 one, one, one. Uh, And also, Idolatry or polytheism, which is a sin against the first commandment, we see that uh, in the Catechism of the Catholic Church, 2112. Okay, uh, some Catholic families still practice not only superstition but idolatry okay? or polytheism, and these are sins against the first commandment. They hurt God uh, in a very grave manner, in a very serious manner. And we see that these were the sins of the Israelites in the Old Testament that caused really God's wrath to fall upon them. So be very careful. Remove all good luck charms and idols in the home because this attracts evil spirits. Okay? Pagan idols, good luck charms. Okay? Charms that uh, supposedly protect from bad luck. Okay? Okay? Using uh, a cult objects okay uh, to gain financial uh, some form of financial uh, benefit okay so it, it's very important that uh, we avoid this and we destroy this in our own families when we see this because uh, many infested homes that we have dealt with in the ministry of exorcism was it was due to these practices when, they, when other gods are brought into the home or good luck charms are used and uh, they, they're simply telling the Lord that, Lord, you're not enough. Okay? And therefore, they seek these spiritual benefits from other powers. Okay? If, you are, if you are not gaining okay, benefits from the kingdom of God, 
automatically it's from the evil one because there are only two spiritual kingdoms. There, are no, there is no middle kingdom. It's, if it's not from God, then you are getting it from the evil one. Therefore, as Catholics, let us be aware of this. Let us be aware of syncretism wherein we contaminate our faith, the purity of our faith with superstitious pagan idolatrous practices. Also, another important thing that we can do is joining a Marian community with other families to protect, maintain, and develop an authentic Catholic culture in the family. Especially now, we have to create this oasis in, our ho in, in homes of Catholics to protect us from the culture that is around us today. I would like to quote some words from Father Gabriel Amorth on Mama Mary. He used to be the chief exorcist of Rome, uh, whom uh, Pope John Paul would uh, send cases to. And he is the founder of the International Association of Exorcists. It is Vatican uh, approved. It has been approved by uh, Pope Francis. And he is, uh, he is one of the exorcists who truly fought for the revival of the ministry. When he was alive, I still met him in Rome. Uh, it's sad that he has passed away. So I would like to quote some of his words. I believe, according to him, he states that consecration to Mary is fundamental. Before I could read, he tells us, the holy pictures were of great influence for me. I would kiss them, especially the holy pictures of Mother Mary. And he also adds, we tried our best to give importance to Marian feasts. I know how efficacious are the pilgrimages to Marian shrines. So as Catholics, when we are sick, okay, uh, it is important that as the saints of old did, they would go to Marian shrines to ask for healing, do a pilgrimage to Marian shrines for healing, or for liberation from uh, 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 diabolical spirits, or to seek blessings from Mama Mary, okay, or through Mama Mary. Also, he says, like Mary, we have to pray and be vigilant. The devil is always busy trying to make us commit sin. Let us offer little acts of penance, self-denial, and mortifications as our little contributions to the sufferings of Christ for the salvation of others. He mentions, I founded the International Association of Exorcists. You know who inspired me to do it? Mary, the Madonna did. In fact, the association is consecrated to Mary. Okay. He mentions the devil recognized the power of the rosary when he said, if men knew the power of the rosary, so here the devil was forced to, to proclaim this in the name of Jesus Christ. The devil said to the mouth of a demoniac, if men knew the power of the rosary, I could do nothing against them. In another occasion, the devil said, every Hail Mary makes hell tremble. Also, uh, Father Amor tells us Satan's followers have a deep aversion to God and, and to Mary. We, and the exorcists see that again and again when we call upon Mama Mary uh, during times of exorcism. The devil really reacts very negatively when we call upon her. The mission of Jesus is also the mission of Mary to save mankind from the evil one. And Mama Mary loves us with the same heart with which she loves Jesus. She loves each one of us personally. The third secret of Fatima. Okay, in the third secret of Fatima, we see an angel with a flaming sword pointing to the earth with his right hand crying, penance, penance, penance. Okay, according to the Vatican, it is a symbol, the flaming sword, the angel with the flaming sword. It is a symbol of God's punishment and could indicate a tremendous war. Pope Benedict XVI, Pope Emeritus Benedict XVI, tells us this represents the threat of judgment which looms over the world. That means the threat is still very much present. And uh, the church mentions that uh, the messages of Fatima are more relevant today than they were in the early part of the 20th century. That means what Mama Mary spoke about in, in the past during her apparitions to the three children is still ongoing. Of course, we already have the consecration of Russia, but we still have the part of doing reparation and consecrating ourselves individually and as a community. And also knowing that uh, communism has spread because uh, it, was, it, was, 
It had been many decades before a proper consecration was done. Communism has spread its influence throughout the world. And it has influenced already countries. And they are, they are now atheistic and very aggressive. Uh, so the, the effects of communism continues today. Now the vision given to uh, the three children, okay, the third secret, there was the path up the mountain led by the Pope trembling and in great pain and sorrow as he passes ruins and corpses. Or according to Cardinal Ratzinger, who became Pope Benedict XVI, it is a journey through a time of violence, destruction, and persecution. Penance, 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 says the angel. What does it mean? God intervenes when there is penance. Penance comes from the Greek word metanoia, which means conversion or change of heart. That means there should be a real conversion in the life of the person. Just like in an exorcism, when we do an exorcism, if the person does not desire to be converted from his old way of life, we don't exorcise because it would be useless. So it's not simply saying that I want to be saved and uh, you know, I want to be a Marian, but we really have to make our lives model the life of Mama Mary. Now, St. John Paul II tells us, through your prayers and mind, it is possible to alleviate this tribulation, the coming chastisement. As we, see, as we saw a while ago in the beginning of our talk, uh, that the signs of the times manifest that uh, it seems that we're in the latter days. As Jesus said to St. Faustina, you are to prepare for my second coming. And also, Mama Mary will be a means to prepare for the second coming. And we see now a lot of Marian apparitions, intercession of, of Mama Mary in our world. So the tribulation, the chastisement, according to St. John Paul II, will come. And he says, it is no longer possible to avert it. We can only alleviate this tribulation, lessen it through our prayers and our sacrifices. One of St. Jacinta's last words to Sister Lucia was this. Tell everybody that God grants us graces through the Immaculate Heart of Mary, that people are to ask her for them, and that the heart of Jesus wants the Immaculate Heart of Mary to be venerated at his side. Tell them also to pray to the Immaculate Heart of Mary for peace since God has entrusted it to her. So we focus our prayers for peace in the world to Mama Mary because this is God's desire. In Revelation chapter 12, verse 1, we see that in the end, the Immaculate Heart will triumph. And a great sign appeared in heaven, a woman clothed with the sun, with the moon under her feet, and on her head, a crown of 12 stars. Now, I would like to end this short talk on this question. How much should we therefore love Mama Mary? According to St. Maximilian Kolbe, never be afraid of loving the Blessed Virgin too much. You can never love her more than Jesus did. And St. Faustina of the Divine Mercy tells us nothing is too much when it comes to honoring the Immaculate Virgin. And finally, St. Teresa of Lusieux, one of my favorite saints, have no fear of loving the Blessed Virgin too much. You will never love her enough, and Jesus will be pleased since the Blessed Virgin is his mother. So I hope this uh, presentation has made us aware of how important we should have a relationship with Mama Mary. Especially, we should never wait. Now is the time because the signs of the times are manifesting the reality that there is something going on, that we are in the latter days. And therefore, we need the, mo the most, we may say, effective weapon that God has created against the devil and against evil and sin, the point of the spear, which is Mama Mary. It was God himself who chose Mama Mary, and therefore, we also choose Mama Mary. Amen.